You know, in this day and age, we think we have to spend a thousand or twelve hundred dollars on an integrated amp that has a phono stage that has a DAC. But what if I told you you could get all of that for three hundred fifty dollars from a reputable company that does it probably better than anybody else? Well, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Yamaha AS301. Listen, we all know how difficult it is for teenagers to utilize technology that doesn't include video games. You know, when you give your kid a laptop and they hand it back to you three or four days later and it doesn't turn on anymore. It's completely dead. There's no physical damage to it. No sweet tea, no cracked screen. It's just dead. And that's why Sith Audio has stepped up once again, providing tech support for our teenagers. That's right, Sith Audio Teenager Tech Support. They'll make sure that your teenager's laptop is locked down tight so that they can't download anything stupid. TikTok videos? Nope. Snapchat? Gone. You just get to do homework and watch videos about cats. That's right, Sith Audio Teenage Tech Support, available for $399 a month. But it's worth it because you don't have to throw a laptop away five times a year. All right, all right. <clears throat> it's dumb. Anyway, Yamaha. Listen, Yamaha's got a soft spot in my heart. My first AVR five-channel home theater receiver was a Yamaha that I purchased from Sears. I actually worked at Sears at the time selling vacuum cleaners and computers. I wanted to work in the stereo section, but they had no openings. But they said you can work next to it and look at the stereos while you sell vacuums and computers. Why vacuums and computers were in the same section? No idea. Anyway, I got a little bit of a discount and I bought my first AVR from Sears, a Yamaha, which still works today. I was using it to play music in my daughter's room, but it threw off a fair amount of heat. So during the summer months, wasn't really that fun for her. I also own a Yamaha CR800 that I just got back in. It's my favorite piece of vintage, well, it's one of my favorite pieces of vintage gear. There's something sweet about that 70s Yamaha sound, the variable loudness control. I love 70s vintage gear when it works and doesn't hum and hiss and sound bad or blow up your speakers. And I've done this type of video before where I compared the AS801 compared to my CR800. Well, let's step down in price to $350 and compare the Yamaha AS301 to the Yamaha CR800 and just discuss if you should be considering this integrated amplifier. Let's talk about what's on the front. On the front, left to right, there is a push power button. So you, you actuate it like that. You push it in like that. Cool thing is though, if you know anything about vintage Yamaha receivers, even the CR620, 420, 820, they had pretty much an identical power button, which is kind of cool. If you're into vintage, it's a throwback, a throwback to the vintage design. Next to that, you have an IR receiver for the remote control, which incidentally is a very nice remote control. Most of the real estate on this thing is, well, dedicated to a CD player, which I don't know if Yamaha even has a CD player that matches this thing. Anyway, if they do, this remote should have you covered. It does have volume, everything you need, switch inputs and things like that. The cool thing is when you hit mute, it, it doesn't just mute it right away. It just slowly brings it down. I thought that was a nice feature. I know, does it really make a difference? No, it doesn't make a difference. However, I just thought it was pretty cool. I hadn't seen that before. Also, the volume pot is motorized, so it actually turns. This is thing this thing is old school. This design the way amps and integrated amps receivers have been designed for a long time. So it has a motorized volume pot. Next to the IR receiver, you have a headphone jack. I did listen to it. It sounds pretty good. I don't exactly know what the power ratings are for it. I'm sure it's not as good as a lot of dedicated headphone amps, but it works and it's there. So that's convenient. All right, then we have these speakers. So you can do speaker A, speaker B, or speaker A plus B, or you can turn the speakers off. So when you're listening to headphones, you're not in party mode. We'll get back to the speaker combos here a little bit later. Next to that, we have tone controls, vertical tone controls. So the knobs, what if you can call them a knob, the tone controls are trapezoidal, kind of, unless I don't know what my shapes are anymore. Anyway, they're skinny trapezoids. 
think that's right. It's kind of like a pyramid with the, I don't know. I'm sure I'm not getting that right. Put it in the comments what shape the tone controls actually are. Anyway, it's like the winter and there's still bugs around. Anyway, there's some throwback styling again to the 70s. So you have bass and then you have treble, then you have the balance and then next to that, the loudness style. So Yamaha has done something really cool for 50 years and that's instead of just having a loudness button, there's a loudness dial. And I know some people are gonna argue with me, but I read the manual and this is what the manual said. The manual says, turn the volume up to the highest level that you would comfortably listen to and then control volume with the loudness control. And I've tried it, it does work. It gets a little bit heavy handed on the bottom of the volume. And I'll talk about kind of where I landed to get this thing to sound the way I wanted it to. The cool thing is, this offers up a loudness control that is, quite frankly, completely missing from most modern integrated amplifiers. And even if you do have a loudness button, it's not variable. Next to that, you have the input selection, and there are a ton of inputs. One has one, two, three analog inputs that aren't even labeled, a CD analog input, a tuner analog input, so I'm no mathematician, but that's five analog inputs, a phono stage, and then optical and coaxial, so this thing does have an antenna deck. And then next to that, you have a big volume control. All of the buttons, sliders, controls are plastic, okay? I get it, it's $350 in 2022. So I would have loved it if they were metal, but they're not metal. However, they look good and they work. So we can't really complain that much. Traditional component size. Okay, that's gonna fit in your rack. In your rack. <laughs> Let's talk about what's on the back. On the back top left corner is your phono stage. I couldn't easily find what the gain is on the phono stage, but I'm sure if I dig through the manuals, I will find it. I did play it with my Metallica limited edition turntable and it did just fine. So I'm sure it's like 42 dB gain, something around those lines. Underneath that, you have the CD analog input. There's nothing different from the rest of the analog inputs though. So it's another analog input. So one of the interesting things about this receiver is it actually has what some people will consider to be record outs. So there are two inputs that have a record output. So if you want to hook up a cassette player and record something, or even some CD players that can record something, you can do it through the Yamaha. It's very interesting. Top middle, you have the DAC, which is an optical input and a coaxial input. The only information I could find is a 24, 192 kilohertz DAC. So it's gonna handle most, if not all, the music you're gonna be throwing at it, unless you listen to DSD like a maniac. Just kidding. If you listen to DSD, you're not a maniac. Also, subwoofer out. I don't think there's a any type of filter on it. So it's just two channels summed. Next to that, an auto standby. You can either have it on or off. Then the speaker bonding posts. Speaker bonding posts are quite nice. They are built well. And there's two sets of them, which means you can run two sets of speakers, A or B, or you can actually buy wire some speakers if you want to. There is an impedance selector switch on the back. So if you're running four ohm speakers, you have to put it on the left. If you're gonna run two pair of eight ohm speakers, it needs to be on the left. If you have six ohm speakers on A and B, then you put it to the right, or you can run A and B speakers on the right switch if they're 12 ohm speakers which isn't very common, but it used to be more common back in the day. And then the power cord is permanently affixed to the AS301. Usually that would be something that would be like, eh, I wish it wasn't. And I still eh, wish it wasn't permanently affixed. But that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Some things in never. Anyway, that's how it is on my CR800. So does it really make a difference? Not really. It's a $350 integrated amplifier with a phono stage and a DAC. What can we really expect? Let's talk about how it sounds. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention on the front is there is a pure direct mode and that basically disables loudness and tone controls and serves you up what Yamaha says this is the cleanest signal available. This amplifier in the flat or in the pure direct mode is a little bit mm, thin for me. Don't despair though. I got it sounding exactly, for the most part, sounding exactly how I wanted it to through a combination of volume. 
loudness control settings, and tone control settings. This sounded a lot like the AS801 that I had in before. Very clean. Very, very, very clean. I feel like there's a little bit of an emphasis around the upper mids. 1800 all the way into the treble regions. So it doesn't seem as punchy. Nah, that's better. Punchy as some other amplifiers. This sounds to me, reminds me of somewhat of the Schitt products. So the Vidar paired up with the Freya. If you don't like that sound though, you can easily change it because there is a cacophony of ways to change the sound. I landed on putting the, the loudness setting about halfway, a little bit 60% of the way, and then actually bringing down treble and bass a little bit. I brought the bass down a little bit more than the treble. But it's going to depend on your listening levels, how far you are from the speakers. So that's going to be an individual thing. The good news is this integrated amp has more versatility than pretty much anything else out there on the market outside of the Yamaha line. And this line goes all the way from $350 all the way up to multiple thousands of dollars. Yamaha's doing some great stuff with two channel amplifiers. As far as soundstage and imaging goes, I didn't notice something that was mm, just hugely immersive and big like a tube amp or anything like that, but it did serve me up the music cleanly. Internal deck's not bad. I compared it to the J2. It doesn't have nearly the soundstage. It doesn't have the authoritative bass punch that the J2 has, but it's very serviceable and I think rivals that of something like an Emotiva TA1 or TA2 because it's the same DAC in both of them. The phono stage is moving magnet only, obviously, and it's clean. If you want something a little bit more romantic, you can look at the $70 Fozzy Audio, plug it in there, and it'll warm things up a little bit. But the internal phono stage and the internal DAC are nothing to sneeze at and aren't embarrassed by even more expensive components. They do sound a little bit different though. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. Uh, incredibly versatile integrated amplifier at an incredible price. $350 gives you so much. You can just connect a Weem Mini streamer to it and be done. Streaming amplifier for about $400. 60 watts I think is going to be plenty for most people. Although I didn't hear I didn't hear the bass control that I hear on some other amplifiers. Specifically the Emotiva stuff, like the TA1, TA2. This reminds me a little bit of some Class D offerings, but there's no way you can get a Class D to sound this way. This reminds me of the IOTA VX, but with a fuller mid-range and bottom end, and then with the tone controls, with the variable loudness button, you can get it sounding pretty much however you like. I still think it was a little bit forward on the top, a little bit forward in the mid-range, and so I did pull that down because basically the loudness control is somewhat of a mid-range control and then it it's complicated i don't understand it really tone controls here are a little bit different they're somewhat of a shelf control so they just bring up all the frequencies so they don't bring up like one single frequency and then have a cue at least that's what the manual said if this thing didn't have variable loudness, if it didn't have tone controls, it would probably be a hard pass for me, simply because it would be too much of a good thing in the upper mids and the top end. As it is though, you can control it and get it sounding exactly how you want it to. Does it compare to the CR800? No, it does not. The CR800 from 1974 is completely in control of the bass. The top end's not quite as harsh and it's a heck of a lot more spacious than the AS301. However, the AS301 is an outstanding value at $350 and is so versatile that you can get it to sound pretty much however you want it to. A little bit of an edge on top, but at $350, it is a winner. And right now they have an open box for $300 on Crutchfield, which makes me mad because I wanted, I was holding out to get an open box to do this review because Yamaha didn't send this to me. I just bought it, but it's there available. There's one available. So if you're interested, I would snatch it up. Yamaha has been around for a long time, making a ton of amplifiers. I don't think you can go wrong with this amplifier from a company like Yamaha. 
So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Patron Zooms. Patron Facebook. Patron Discord. You can use the affiliate links. If you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. Buy me a cup of coffee with the thanks button down below. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can also just like and subscribe to the channel. That helps out the channel quite a bit too. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new Omaha. <laughs> Omaha. Binge listen through your new Yamaha AS301 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Mm -hmm.